I want to do a quick video about installing Jupyter Notebooks for Python without installing Anaconda because pretty much everything always covers you gotta install Anaconda I've installed that I think once it sucks it's bloated I hate it um, anyway it's just not even necessary you can just use the regular old official C, th C Python distribution and install Jupyter Notebooks with pip and no sweat so Anyway, I just uninstalled Python. I'm going to run through the entire process real quick. So you go to python.org and we can go to downloads and get the latest version of Python 3, latest stable version. And we'll just save that. And we'll also go to the Jupyter project. And you can just go to jupiter.org and there's all this cool information about it. Um, the main thing that Jupyter is used for are these Jupyter notebooks and they were formerly known as IPython notebooks so they're called like IPyMB files. They allow you to go in and basically uh, in case you're not familiar like right here is a little snippet of code and you can see there's like some rich text instructions above it. It will run this code, evaluate it, IPython uh, interpreter style, and then it will show the results below. You can see right here it's using like matplotlib or something like that to um to display some type of a chart or something. So, or it looks like it's like interactive controls. I didn't even know that it could do that. So that's pretty cool. And another thing to note, like you'll hear pretty much everybody up to to this point is um, talking about Jupyter Notebooks but what just came out is this Jupyter Lab deal right here and um, I don't know all I've really been able to find out about it is what's right here so um, as far as what I can infer from what I can see in these little thumbnail pictures that it looks like maybe you can I don't know, just like a richer version of Jupyter Notebooks is what I'm kind of getting out of that. But anyway, don't be scared to download Jupyter Lab. That is the new version. That's what I got. So um, as far as I can tell, that is that's the next era of Jupyter Notebooks. So anyway, we got Python. That's all that matters for right now. Um, I'm going to hit Control J to bring up my downloads since I closed that. And I'll just go ahead and run it to install it. And I'm going to install Launcher for all users. If you're on a system where you don't have administrative privileges, then just uncheck that. For convenience, you most likely want to add Python 3.7 to your path. That's so you can just open up like a command prompt window, type Python. And um, if you have multiple versions of Python or something, of course, there's more to it than that. You could just click Install Now. Um, I always do Customize. So I want Docs. I want PIP, which is basically how you would bring in those uh, popular third-party libraries. TCLTK and IDLE, that's all the graphical uh, user interface stuff. Python test suite, I'm going to go ahead and skip that. Py launchers for all users, this is definitely good if you're planning on having multiple versions of Python. You can just type like py um, space minus two and that would automatically call like the latest uh, Python 2 interpreter you have. You could do the same thing with py minus three and once you've typed like py2 or py3 Everything after that is just like typing Python, da 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 da. So, anyway, that's just something to note. Um, I'm going to check that again. They sort of just recently updated this installer, so there might be, it looks like some redundancies or whatever, but I've already used it before and it's pretty feels pretty stable. So, associates files, Python, create shortcut. Uh, Python environment variables, precompile standard library, that will. You know, that's a one time uh, sit through that one time and then in the future all that stuff should run a lot faster. I'm not going to bother with the debug stuff. Um, as you can see, if you pull in the debug binaries, uh, you're going to have a dependency on Visual Studio 2015. So anyway, this is it right here. This is what I would recommend, I think, for um, and is trying to install the 32 bit setup. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel mine because I want to get the 64-bit. So I didn't realize, if you're unsure, 32-bit is fine. I mean, if it fires up and runs, it fires up and runs. 
I'm just a snob, so I'm going to get the 64-bit one. It looks like you come over here, Python releases for Windows, uh, or whatever platform you have. I clicked Windows, and then you go latest, Python, 374, stable, 64-bit executable installers, looking like the right one. 3.7, it's not a beta or pre-release. Okay. Save that thing. It's really cool. Python's 25.4 megabytes, 25 and a half megabytes. That's pretty rad. That's nothing. I've tried every which way to hate Python and everything about it, and I just keep coming back to it. Okay, so I'm going to run through the same process right here. Install at 3.7 a path, customize, documentation, da da da, no test suite, yeah, keep that stuff. Um, install for all users, pre-compile, da da da. Now it's going into the 64-bit directory, which is what I want. I'm going to install that. All right, setup was successful. Special thanks to Mark Hammond. Who, why am I reading that? Anyway, he's the guy who made the uh, installer and ported it to Windows, I guess, which is really cool. So I'm going to close that and close out this Python page because it's done. It's installed. This I actually put a shortcut to it that should doesn't work anymore. So uh, if you open up your Start menu, you can just Type in Python. And then idle Python 64 bit 3.7. And then you got Python right there. And if you want this cool uh, dark background, you can just go to options, configure idle, and then uh, kind of have my screen resolution set low right now. Then right there you can set up the font and size of everything and right here you can just switch this to idle dark and apply that and then you get this cool thing with the syntax coloring and whatnot and you can just do file new file to start a new file and say print and then f5 to save and run it Oh yeah, I forgot. I don't feel like saving a file. But in theory, do I want to save it? Nope. Okay, so that's the basic Python interpreter. As a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and just right click that and say pin to taskbar. And then slide it over somewhere. Cool. F4, close that down. So now it's the Jupyter deal. So with this, we're going to need to use pip. We can just go to command prompt, or if you search out command prompt, just type in like cmd or whatever command you want to use, and then right click it. Ooh, come on. And uh, run as administrator. And if you're using Windows 7 or something too, you can do it right here and just find command, right click, and then uh, run as administrator. Okay, and then you'll see administrator command prompt. But if you only installed as a regular user, then you don't have to um, run as administrator. Just run as a regular user, but whenever you run the pip install command, you're going to have to do like a pip install uh, user and then whatever the package name that you're going to install, and that will install it to your user directory instead of your... Um, instead of trying to install it system-wide. Okay, so basically in Windows you can just type where and then say like where Python and then it will tell you where all your Python any Python executable that's in the path it will give you the location of. In Unix, Linux, Mac environments you type which Python and that's going to give it to you but it will only give you usually which only gives you like the very first one. It finds where on Windows will give you all the ones in the path it finds in the order it finds them so that can be kind of handy. 
Um, you can also try like where or which Python 3 and see if you have that. I think it's kind of stupid they don't stick with it and have a Python 3 executable on Windows. It would just make everything so much easier and consistent. But anyway, um, if you have multiple versions of Python, you'll want to pay attention to that and make sure that you're using like the right Python or whatever. And if you have to, you can run a path command like in Windows. If you had a multiple, you could do path equals um, whatever whatever Python path. So like we want this one, right? So we could just grab that. I'm going to highlight it, right click to copy, and then right click to paste. And then I could put a semicolon and then bring in the old path with this environment variable. So that would effectively stuff that Python executable at the very first beginning of the search. And then if we type in path, we can see right here that even though um, even though that's somewhere else in here right here it looks like we just went ahead and stuffed it right there so anyway I think you get the idea and if you don't it doesn't matter you probably don't even need it as long as you're finding if you type a Python then you get a Python interpreter like that and then you can type exit with the braces and get out of it just like that um, so anyway there's pip and we'll do a where pip and then there's also pip 3 too so if you have python 2 and python 3 installed just type pip 3 anyway i'll shut up and just get on with it so jupyter notebook what you want to do is like you can do pip minus minus help and that's going to give you most of the command line stuff get you running from there um, if you want like here's the commands these are basically like the modes that pip's going to kick into we'll usually be using install um, sometimes you want a list, so we can go pip, list, and then see if there's extra help on list itself. So here's the extra stuff that we could um, see. It says pip list options right there. So these are all just for pip list right there, right? So pip, let's see what uh, extra modules we have installed. So by default, those are the ones that comes with Python. And right there you can see it's like, you're using an old, slightly older version of pip. Not a huge deal, but anyway, um, I usually just go ahead and upgrade it when I see that command. And I tend to use this command that they recommend because sometimes I've had trouble with other ones. But the important thing is to make sure you're calling the right Python interpreter and the right pip um, if you do run into issues. I just got rid of having multiple Python versions just because of stuff like that. Like getting sick of dealing with it I hardly ever use Python 2 anymore so I figured I'd if I need it again I'll just reinstall it okay so it's successfully upgraded so let's go ahead and try pip list see what that says there we go got everything without the error so I'm just gonna go ahead and install Jupyter notebooks now You could type Jupyter Lab and install that entire Jupyter Lab suite. I'm just going to install the core Jupyter and the notebooks portion. I had started to uh, record this video and record uh, install Jupyter Lab, and then something happened with the video recording and all that. I think I filled up the hard drive, so it sort of stalled out, and I had to restart, do a hard restart on the computer, and um, Anyway, Jupyter Labs was partially installed, which seems to be Jupyter Notebooks plus a whole bunch of other stuff. But it was just huge. I didn't remember it being so big the last time I installed it. So anyway, I just now just did the notebooks with just that Ju pip install Jupyter without the lab on it. That seems to go way quicker. Um, maybe it's because I've already installed a bunch of junk from the other deal anyway to fire that up you just type Jupyter notebook but you spell it right and you really don't even have to run that from an administrator console at least I don't ever run into that problem so I really shouldn't be doing that you really shouldn't run anything as administrator of course unless you absolutely need to um, this is kind of stalling out anyway. Oh, okay. 
I'm going to close that console and I'm going to reopen another console just normal. Oh, it's trying to give me that console back. Okay, let me try this one. Okay. Now I'm going to just type Jupyter Notebook. This should start a server on like port 888. So you can see it says localhost port 888. Um, this newer version should automatically open a browser pointed at that address with the token and everything. So that's cool. If it doesn't automatically open the address, then be sure and just copy like exactly this. It's kind of frustrating. Um, maximize the window, like literally to copy this. If it doesn't automatically open a window, you got to copy that. Right click, go copy and paste it over here, and then come back and copy and paste that little portion and add it to the tail end so that you get that whole security token. That's to prevent people, if they can get into your machine on port 888 or whatever, um, that's to prevent them to, from being able to screw with this, use this as some sort of backdoor or anything. So it kind of just makes it so they have to really, the chances of them guessing that token are probably about the chances of them solving the next uh, block on the blockchain as well for Bitcoin. Anyway, here it is, Jupyter Notebooks without any sort of anaconda or anything. And you can just basically, uh, it's going to fire up from whatever folder you run it from. So I can come back here and you can see they say just use the control C. And if a local host isn't working for your address, try 12701 like that. Um, but I'm going to control C, stop this server. It'll take it a minute. It's got to like close out some files and junk like that. Should be working. I'm going to press it one more time, control C. So there it goes, proper shutdown. And then what I do is I have a source folder, uh, Python 3, and then notebooks. Yeah, so right here, and I'll usually just fire it up right here, just Jupyter Notebook. And even if you install Jupyter Lab, you can still fire up Jupyter Notebook just like that. So there it is, I can shut down this one. So now the base directory is effectively this um, C source Python 3 notebooks star. Like we're basically right here. And this is the equivalent. That's, um, that's what this is right here. So we can start a new Python 3. Running, seems like it's running a little bit slower than it usually does. Maybe because I just did a fresh install or something and it's like compiling stuff or something. Okay. Oops. Okay. And then you can just hit run. And there you can see hello. So that's the way that works. And I can define a variable like A equals 5 in this window run it and then a equals five from then on I can say hey what's a equal run five there you go you know what's b equal run not defined cool so that's that and then uh, you know all the regular stuff in here that you want to do if you want to get help if you want like numpy scipy all that you install those with pip just pip numpy I want to say it's been a year or two since I've installed those, but I think one might pull in the other. I forget. But anyway, it doesn't hurt to say like pip install numpy space scipy space matplotlib space pandas. Like you can do all that and that will work. And if you get going in here, you want to save it, just do a save as. Um, this download as on Windows, most likely pretty much nothing I think is going to work out of there. You can save as like pi. That's pretty handy. Stuff like that, like the really basic stuff. But um, as far as like PDF and all that, it's going to expect that you have um, what's usually like a Linux command line. You can see right here, what is it? This program not found on path. If you So you can see if there's a Windows version, put it in your path, whoop de whoop and then, you know, then you'll get that functionality. But the main thing I think is just to be able to kind of like dink around with this sort of like a uh, 
a fancier REPL. So we can go over here and go to close and halt. And then that closes that tab out and we're back to this. And now you can see, even though I didn't explicitly save a file, it did create this untitled file right there. And I can just open that back up and continue right where I left off. And you can even go back to a cell, hit run again, and now you can see that's cell one again. Hmm. Oh, because it's the first one this session. Okay. Anyway, close and halt. Yeah, lead page. And then I'm going to go ahead and check that box and then just delete it. Clean up my little mess. And I'll go ahead and go to quit. You have shut down Jupiter. You can now close this tab. Okay, and we go over here. Oh, nice. Automatically shut down Jupiter. And I can just type exit to get back out. And that is that.